Good day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy. This is the Financial Education Channel, and today we're talking about five industries that are going to be monsters within the next five years, guys. I got five different industries here, and I got also two honorable mentions that I'm going to mention toward the end and not kind of go into as much in detail. But these five industries are already blowing up. We're seeing huge numbers for them. And in five years, they're just going to be way, way dramatically bigger than they are. And I'm going to kind of maybe throw around some names out on how you could uh, play some of these these industries that are growing if you want to do that, guys. So leave a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. Leave a comment if you have anything to say about these industries or if you're involved in them at all. Let's get into this, guys. So number one big industry that is going to blow up and it's already blowing up is drones. Drones and drone applications are going to be absolutely monstrous. Right now, drones are really only used for two things. One is military. The other is primarily photography, videography, what I do actually for business. Those are the two main applications for drones. But gosh, if you've ever kind of researched drones and some of the applications that are going to be happening in the future, whether it be like an Amazon using them to deliver packages, whether it be, um, you know, industrial cropping, uh, so many different things, guys, for drones. I mean, we saw them at the halftime show. If you watch the halftime show of the Super Bowl with Lady Gaga, they had drones flying all around there. It's amazing how, how drones are going to expand. Now, there's really... In my opinion, there's about three realistic ways. I think that at the Super Bowl, there was uh, there were Intel drones, I believe, flying around, but that's not one of the three ways we're going to talk about. So there's about three ways you can play drones. One's a company named Aerovi Aerovironment. I believe their ticker symbol is AVAV. They do, they do more like industrialized type drones and more like military type drones. So that's definitely a way that you can play directly on that game. Then you could play GoPro. GoPro is my biggest investment in that they're just getting into the, the, the drone game. So who knows if they'll be huge or not, um, but that's a, that's a direct play on the consumer type drone business. And the third way is actually probably the best way to play drones, honestly. It's a company named Ambarella. Their ticker symbol is AMBA, I believe. They are the main chip supplier for all the DJI drones, which DJI is by far the biggest drone company. It's not even close. They dominate everybody so much. They're in all the new models of the DJI. And, and the Ambarella, they also make the chips for the GoPro cameras. So the, it doesn't matter, even if GoPro was to gain market share in DJI, still, Ambarella would still be fine as long as they keep the, you know, the same customers and whatnot. So that is a direct play company that you can play directly as far as a drone game goes. Qualcomm is kind of getting into that game, but Qualcomm is such a big company that even if they get into drones, it's probably not going to move their, their business needle that much, which is kind of why I'm not, not into that way. So there's really three ways. There's the environment, industrialized military drones. There's GoPro, which is straight consumer type drones. And then there's the last one, which is Umbrella, which makes the chip for GoPros and makes the chips for the DJI drones, guys. So you got some names there, and that's just a huge industry. I mean, let me know what you guys think about that. I think that industry is going to be monstrous over time. Number two, marijuana. Weed is becoming to get, beginning to get legalized more and more across states. So as, as it, it gets more legalized and legalized, that be, there's a bigger and bigger opportunity for companies out there. Now, I get a lot of questions on this channel about talk about weed stocks and what marijuana stocks. I have not seen any marijuana stocks that really look legit and I can say that's the one. The reason being is marijuana and weed is in such a like such early days. It's in such early days. It's in such an infancy. The main way to make money on marijuana, honestly, is when it becomes legalized in your state, if it does, or your municipality, that is when to research with the government, you know, how do, how do I get involved with this? How do I do it legally? Open up a dispensary, open up a cookie shop or whatever, a brownie shop, a bake shop that sells marijuana products. That's the way to pro play it. That's the way you can actually make huge sums of money. The, the other like uh, public companies that are kind of like penny stocks almost that are kind of playing on this whole game, I don't know about those because those are like highly risky. You're taking a huge risk in a lot of those names, guys. You're taking a huge risk. And 
And someone brought up a good point the other day. They said, uh, I'll probably a lot of the cigarette companies are probably going to buy up some of the whatever companies do come out and they're the ones that win the game and they're the ones that are successful. A lot of the cigarette companies will probably end up buying out those marijuana companies because they're going to have the cash to do it. And that way they can diversify their, their business off of the declining cigarette business into the, the gaming marijuana business. So that's maybe a way you could play it there, but that's absolutely going to be a huge industry as long as it's it you know becomes more legalized upon state upon state guys huge industry out there number three talent agency slash managers for social media stars or up and coming social media stars so right now there's not a lot of people that like, have like managers there's like multi multi networks or something like that they're called that like they they just you know send you an email or whatever and hey join our network and then they take 30 percent of your ad revenue from whatever you're doing and they don't really do crap for you what i'm talking about is i'm talking about an actual manager i'm talking about there's probably gonna be tens of thousands of managers out there if not hundreds of thousands of managers that actually manage uh social media stars that are up and coming the same way, you know, an athlete gets managed or something like that because there will be so much money in it, guys. There will be so much money in it. I'm talking, you know, Twitter stars. I'm talking Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, YouTube, all these different social media platforms and probably social media platforms that haven't even been created yet. There will be new stars on those ones and there's going to end up being so much money in that because advertisers are going to realize how much power – uh, a social media star has and how how much they can gain you know from using their brand or their service on that platform so then comes in managers that can make, then make those deals and things like that they give ind individualized service that can talk on behalf of that social media persona so huge opportunity there guys there's going to be I, like I said, I think there will be tens of thousands of strict managers, uh, talent agencies out there that are going to be doing phenomenal, guys, phenomenal. So that's going to be a huge industry. And I don't, there's really no way you can play a public company as far as I know on that. But that's just something to think about as an entrepreneur. Like, think about that as an idea, uh, you know, a business idea in the future. Number four. Connect it everything in your home. This is going to be a huge industry, guys. The ability to talk and basically adjust your air conditioner. Siri, turn down my AC two degrees. Siri, open up the blinds. Siri, turn on the TV. You can just talk and do everything. Siri, set the oven to 350 degrees. Connect at home is going to be huge, guys. Connect at home. Now, there's a lot of chips that go into that. So I would research, if I were you, the semiconductor chips that are actually going into some of these connected products, like the Google Home, like the Amazon Echo, like um, some. I saw a lot of ovens and refrigerators at CES that are actually connected, that you can connect to the products, the Nest thermostat. A lot of these different things, guys, you can play the direct company that sells the consumer product, or you can play the chip company that's putting the chips into that product. So I would research that if I were you, and because, I mean, I can see five years from now, the home experience will be very dramatically different. I know one of my investments, Wynn Resorts, they just uh, put the Amazon Echoes in all the rooms there, and you can tell an Amazon Echo whatever you need to tell it, and, and basically it'll do things for you. So Amazon Echo, open the blinds, Amazon Echo, turn on the TV, Amazon Echo, you know, turn on the heat, whatever. Um, you can even, I believe, call room service, Amazon Echo, um, you know, <laughs> order me a burger or whatever. So it's freaking insane. There's actually a video on YouTube you might want to search, search like win win resorts amazon echo or something the video will pop up there it's freaking cool guys and i imagine five years from now a lot of homes will be integrated with a connected home and probably 10 to 15 years from now it'll be like almost every single home is a connected home guys so that's a huge industry that's blowing up guys number five uh social media stars turned production creators so this is like Remember I talked about what I was talking about earlier, you know, with the Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, Snapchat, all these type of different, you know, platforms. They all have their own like stars on those those platforms. What's going to end up happening is so much money is going to begin to get thrown at these people that they're going to end up being able to actually turn into production like a production type company at, at some point where they are not just the ones that are on camera, where they actually have enough money, where they're hiring other people and they can actually build out other channels. Right now, it's not really economically feasible because it's so early days in this game. I mean, the highest, let's, look, let's just look at YouTube, for instance, the highest paid YouTuber 
uh, Pootie Pie. He makes like about $15 million a year. I know that seems like a lot of money, but when you take it into account that he's the biggest by far, for over 50 million subscribers, that's not crap when you look at some of the, the most famous actors and actresses, what kind of money they're getting, and how few people actually watch their movies when you compare it to how many people actually watch a video from someone like him. It's not even comparable. And he's just one guy, whereas an actor is just one person in, in a movie that's got 30, 50, 100 people in it. So what's going to end up happening is people that are at his level, they're going to probably be making 50, 60, 70 million dollars a year where they can actually go find talent, um, you know, beautiful people or that have beautiful personalities and all those kinds of things, pay him $150,000, $200,000, start a channel from scratch with all high-end production equipment, you know, maybe start a baking channel or whatever that, that, that industry they want to get into. And then go ahead and then take the money that's earned from that channel, put it into another channel, and kind of create an entire network of channels that are, are all owned by that original creator. And they're just cutting checks for everybody, the production assistants, the, the people that are on camera, all those kinds of things. Because it will be, it'll be economically feasible enough to do so. Because right now it's really not. Right now it's at the game where someone can just maybe pay some people to help them kind of do their work and they keep their channel going. But they can't really pay to start other channels from scratch and pay, you know, people a lot of money, you know, to be um, people on camera and all those kinds of things. So that is a huge industry that's going to open up, guys. You're going to see a lot of that over the next five, ten years. A couple honorable mentions here. Uh, esports. Esports is going to be huge. Esports, if you don't know, it's basically like competitive sports gaming um, on, you know, uh, Playstations or Xboxes or the computer or whatever. And basically they have like arena style seating. If you haven't ever uh, like researched esports, you have no clue what I'm talking about. Just type in like Vice Esports. Vice did a really good documentary about a year or two years ago on esports and, and how it's expanding and whatnot. Activision Blizzard is, is a company that's involved with esports big time, and they have like a network that's kind of like the ESPN of esports. So Activision Blizzard, I believe their ticker symbol is ATVI. That might be a company you want to check out if you want to play that directly. You can also check out some other companies, some other gaming companies and whatnot, but esports, going to be huge in my opinion. And also, this is a huge one for... If you're like someone that knows how to code, you should come up with this. Apps that connect retirees. So, and I'm not talking Facebook, I'm not talking Snapchat. Those apps were built for people like me. Oh, actually Snapchat was probably built for like people a lot younger than me. Uh, Instagram, those, those kind of things, those are not built for 60, 70 year olds. But we see the baby boomers are retiring, you know, in mass amounts over the next 5, 10, 15 years. So apps, if there could be some successful creators that can create some successful apps that are very simple, very intuitive, that are directly for retirees that can connect them and, you know, put them in clubs or, you know, hey, I like to play chess or I like to play golf on the weekends, you know, or I like to go on walks or run and connect retirees the same way, um, you know, people my age are connected by Facebook or, or Snapchat and things like that that we may know how to use that were, that were created directly for us. If someone can create things like that, apps like that, but for retirees, that's a huge opportunity, guys, there. So you might want to pay attention if you, any public companies really try to go in that space. But also, if you're a coder, I would I would spend all my time trying to create apps for, for something like I talked about, where you can connect retirees, and it's an ad-based platform. And there's so many possibilities there, but that is a huge one you could do. That's a That's a... That's a billion dollar idea I just gave out there, guys. But you got to know how to code. You got to know how to integrate it. You got to know how to get the word out and all those kinds of things. And you got to have a lot of money back in you. You got to be able to have venture capital money back in you and things like that. So it's a lot, it's simpler than, I mean, it's, it's a lot more complicated than it sounds when I make it sound simple like that. But if you could create that, that's a huge opportunity. It's ridiculous, guys. So anyways, thank you so much for watching us today, guys. I hope you, you uh, found this video enlightening. Leave a thumbs up if you did. If you just came across this channel and you've not subscribed yet, you may want to we talk personal finance on the channel we talk entrepreneurship we i gave out a couple entrepreneur ideas here and we also talk the stock market the most in this channel thank you for watching guys and have a great day